from MTN, the Montana Television Network. This is Face the State. Well, good morning and happy Sunday. Uh, thanks for joining us for this edition of Face the State. This morning, our special guest is a storyteller, really, uh, Casey Anderson. Uh, many of you may be familiar with his work uh, in wildlife documentary, but Casey, you've uh, uh, got a new program coming up on the Smithsonian Channel. We'll talk about uh, all of the nuts and bolts of that in a minute. Uh, this opportunity that you have, the mountain lion and me. Tell me first off, how did this all come about? Because it was, you, you can plan your life all you want to. This one really kind of fell into your lap, literally. Literally, yeah. You know, I mean, what I do for a living, I'm a wildlife filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And I spend a lot of my time just looking for stories like this. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to a mountain lion, they're one of these animals you just never see. They're very difficult to even get a glimpse of. Well, lo and behold, one came knocking at my door, literally at my house, started seeing tracks, started following them and realized that I had a neighbor and the neighbor was a mountain lion. Yeah, has this unfolded? I mean, you're looking at these tracks, you literally followed, turned out to be a female, her tracks uh, to a section of your property and yeah, yeah, take me through that, the first, uh, first discovery. Yeah, I was literally seeing tracks in the snow one night, started following them, starting to you know, get to understand who this mountain lion was and then after following tracks for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. seeing that she's living in the neighborhood, living around the properties, uh, the, my neighbor's backyards, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I got to know her, got to know her patterns, I realized she had kittens. Mm -hmm. And she was calling the mountain right behind my house home. So as a filmmaker, again, this is kind of, you know, this is a dream come true. It's like winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. And to have the opportunity to, you know, literally wake up in the morning and walk out the door and be at work and to be filming one of the most elusive animals on the planet and to tell that story. Mm. And here's an animal that we don't know much about. So every second that unfolded in front of us was something new. We were learning all the time as we, as we were watching this unfold. Including, we, many of us know that mountain lions stash their food. They cache it away for later times, uh, but finding it in the, a crazy place on your property, to say the least. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. When you think about a wild animal, when they're born into this world, in some way, we believe that they kind of live in this pristine wilderness. But since the day that this cat was born, you know, there's cliffs, there's trees, there's streams, there's fences, there's roads. And there's this old ghost town, kind of an old homestead down the road, that she started to utilize to hunt and to cache her food. And this is something that she just does. She doesn't know that it's out of the ordinary. This is just what a mountain lion does in her mind. And this is, this is her home. It couldn't have worked out better for a filmmaker, though, to have her start stashing this on buildings on your property. Smithsonian Channel actually providing us some video. We're going to play some of that right now and just talk to me through this. As we're looking at this video, you set up cameras in these buildings to take a look at it specifically. Let's roll that video and take a look at it here, Casey, as you're Near unfolding. the edge of my property. So telling a story like homestead. this, you know, it's one of those things. If you set up a camera and trap and barns. just get a few seconds All of behavior, mm -hmm. but nobody's that's one thing. There for mm -hmm. years. But as a filmmaker and a storyteller and really trying to do it in a cinematic way, house. imagine this, one of the most elusive animals on the planet deciding to use this ghost ranch, as we call it, mm -hmm as a place yeah, to eat. And it's like literally this cat going on a Hollywood set. You couldn't, you couldn't create something more beautiful and interesting than this, this ghost ranch. You live in the Paradise Valley. You've done your work all around Yellowstone, that whole kind of area. But I mean, literally, this is, this is your backyard. We're not talking about a car trip. You didn't have to pack a lunch. This is just down the hill from where you live. Yeah, I mean, I would travel hundreds of miles a day sometimes just looking for a track. Mm -hmm. I walk out the door and there'd be a track literally on my front step and that's where my day would begin. That's where many of these stories would begin every day. Did this surprise you with this, this here? I mean, the fact that she was able, I mean, we, we know they're smart animals. They have to be, they're cunning, they're secretive and all of that, but the ability for her to use that building as a cache, I mean, did, was that the beginning of the, uh, the discovery you had of this uh, cat? It blew my mind. You know, I always speculate, I bet you animals use those old buildings for something. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's simply thinking like shelter or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then going down there and walking in those rooms and looking around and seeing all these remnant carcasses around. It was like walking into a serial killer's basement mm -hmm. in this beautiful place. And then kind of putting two and two together and realizing that she's using these buildings and it's genius. Mm -hmm. Because if she can drag the deer that she's killed into those buildings and cache it just like she would under a bush and hide it from scavengers, she be, will be able to utilize that entire kill because the coyotes and the wolves won't go into those buildings. The eagles and the ravens that are flying above won't see that deer inside those buildings. So she would eat every bit of it. 
and she could come back. So essentially, she used these old buildings like a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And it was important for a mother because she has kittens, and she had to utilize every bit of that resource, and she did over and over again. And we documented the whole thing. After the buildings, though, you realize that she's got to be going somewhere else. You've got to see what's going on. So you literally just strapped on the backpack, and there go the tracks. You had nice snow that, uh, that day in the paradise. You just start following her. Go through that for me. Yeah, you know, if you're in the tracks of the line, you're always going to learn. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't even see where she goes. Mm -hmm. But then you start to see, oh, she likes this cave, or she likes to walk on this ridge, or when she likes to lay down for the day, she prefers this big Douglas fir tree to lay at her. So you start learning those things, and then you start looking there. Mm -hmm. you wake up in the morning, look around, see the tracks going up there. Oh, she went to her favorite cave. And now I know what she's going to do, because I've followed these tracks so many times. Mm -hmm. She hunts from that cave. So then we get ourselves in position, get ready for the hunt. And what we did is really made the unpredictable, sort of predictable, enough right. that we could capture this on film. That's phenomenal. The way you have found out, though, that she had kittens, you decide for some reason in Casey Anderson's head, I'm going to put this camera down on the ground just to see what I'm going to get. Take me through that process. I mean, it was fairly easy. You were going to put up a camera trap around this kill. What possessed you to do it the way you did? I mean, the discovery that came from that camera on the ground is phenomenal. It, you know, it's one of those things, you know, a predictable situation is when they make a kill. You know they're going to return. So mm -hmm. we were always putting camera, cameras up in different angles, just trying to get, cover it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And one was a low angle, and she stepped over the top of it. And I was at, you know, that evening I was re re reviewing all the footage. And in fact, my wife over my shoulder goes, hey, wh what's that? Because she stepped over the camera, and you could see that her mammary glands were full, mm -hmm. and she had been freshly nursing. So now in my head, I'm like, okay, she doesn't have the kittens with her. She's nursing. So these are little kittens. She's not bringing them to the kill yet. Mm -hmm. So now we have a cat that is going to stay close to that area. Mm -hmm. If she has kittens, she's not going to move far. So now I'm like, okay, I've got a mountain lion, I've got a kitten somewhere, I've got to find them. This story just keeps unfolding for you. I mean, that, that, I'm following along with you as this uh, unfolds. You're, well, first off, to get to that kill site, uh, it, it's a hike, to say the yeah. least. She can make it up there a little easier than Casey did. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, mountain lions are athletes. They can go wherever they want to. And uh, following around, finding a kill site, you know, using the birds, the birds tell me where, she, where that's mm -hmm. at. Every time you find a kill, it's a jackpot. Right. But through that year, we found 30. And, there, and so now we have a predictable spot, and we know she's going to go back to it. And then we, she's going to bring her kittens to it. And then we're going to be able to watch as those kittens grow. We're going to get to watch those personalities unfold of each of those kittens. We get to watch how she treats those kittens and what she teaches them. And again, this is an animal that you just get a glimpse of. And even if you get a minute of a glimpse, mm -hmm. that's like winning the lottery. But this story kept getting bigger and better, and we're learning things and, and falling in love with her and the family. I was going to say, this is no longer a story. You're not telling a story. You're a part of the story. This is, becomes intimacy uh, from mountain lion with kittens to named creatures. Get, lay me through that as you uh, unfold these uh, kittens. You learn about all of this. It, it becomes a little more than a story, Casey. It, it becomes very personal. I could tell that just from watching and listening. Yeah, it became an obsession. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew how lucky I was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I said to the rest of my team, I'm doing this no matter what. And, you know, through the whole project, I wake up in the morning and I had one thing in mind, is to watch this family do what it's going to do. Because I know that it may never happen again. Right. And then when you start to watch and get to know the animals and see those individual personalities, it's actually the essence of the show. You know, they are making their own choices. They live in a very specific way, in a very specific place. And it's really the ingredients of the recipe that they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you think about mountain lions, you think about mountain lions in kind of the broad stroke of the brush. But when you can tell a story about a mother, mm -hmm. an individual mother, and her family, and these individual kittens, and who they are, mm. it brings people in. Mm. It becomes relatable at some level, because she's just a mom. Right. And you know, when you hear about mountain lions, you hear about them killing things, or they make the, make the news because they've done something wrong. And that's what we know about them. Right. And it's nobody's fault. But if you have the opportunity to tell their real story and get into the, to the soul of that animal, of that individual, that's who they are. That's who they really are. Right. And people will look at them differently. You, you talked about it uh, at one point in the, uh, in the uh, presentation about how in the past you've spent a great deal of time trying to hide the cameras and, and keeping them away from that. She really let you. Let's uh, give her her real name, Mama Mo. Mama Mo, yeah. Mama Mo let you into this family in a lot of ways because you didn't work to cover the cameras. They were right there, and she obviously didn't seem to have too much of an issue with that. Well, I mean, there's no book that, you know, Mountain Lion Filming 101. Mm -hmm. 
or for dummies, <laughs> mountain lion filming for dummies. And uh, yeah, so you're always trial and error and seeing what's going to work. I mean, how do you set up cameras around a kill? And we did, you know. We're gonna, you know, putting camouflage on the cameras and everything. But who are we fooling? She's a mountain lion. Right. I mean, she jumps on the back of an elk and a deer every time she got to eat and kills it. She's hypersensitive and in tune. So we realized every time we try to hide the cameras, she thought that it was kind of weird because it's like, what is that thing? If we put them right out there in the wide open, it gave her the chance to say, oh, it's just that camera again. And then she let her guard down. She did whatever she would do naturally. And that is what we wanted. We wanted to be the fly on the wall. Right. We didn't want to influence their behavior. We just wanted to watch this family do what it would do if we weren't watching. And, and very soon after you start doing that, these kittens start developing their little personalities. Let's start at uh, the first one. Let's start with Eenie. What did we learn about Eenie? Well, Eenie, they, Meenie, Miney, and Mo. I'll yeah. Right now. I love the names. I just think that. Eenie, Meenie, Miney, and Mama Mo. Let's yeah. start with Eenie. As you're unfolding and watching all of this video, what are we learning about her. Well, Eenie was, uh, Eenie was the smaller of the kittens, mm -hmm. so, you know, kind of the Eenie one, mm -hmm. and uh, she was very, but the most adventurous. Mm -hmm. And she was always knocking the camera traps down and sniffing them, and she was just kind of a, a bit of a mischievous cat. Uh, Miney, possessive, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to take this thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then, you know, so Eenie, Meenie, Miney, Eenie, Meenie, Miney, I'm losing track there, and you just start to see these things, right. so, but their personalities are reflecting that. So it was Eenie, Meenie, and Mama Mo got her name after Eenie, Meenie, Miney. It oh. just kind of worked out. Yeah, there. and it was interesting because as, as those personalities developed, they really kind of owned those names in a, mm -hmm. in a level. And uh, you know, you just see these things that you see and can reflect on, even in your own family. Right. I mean, you, it, you, you've lived in the paradise for a long time, and you've, you, I mean, you, you're there summer, winter, spring. You go through the whole seasons and things like that. You talked about the success rate of Mama Mo. How what a, an efficient hunter she was, having these three kittens at home, and being able to take care of that. Very efficient. Did you have a a thought in the back of your head, holy cow, this stuff's going on around me all the time and I'm not really aware of it until you were able to venture into her world a little bit. I mean, I would think that at some level I should know a lot about wildlife. Mm -hmm. And as I was watching this story unfold, I realized how much I didn't know. And, and exactly what you said. Like, I'd watch her watch people mm -hmm. out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how many times has she done that to me? And I think that's one of those things. It's like that out of sight, out of mind. And often people who might have a mountain lion in their backyard, not knowing, it's kind of freaky, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and if you're afraid, then why would you protect something you're afraid of? Right. And so by shining the light on the secretive animal and showing the true essence and showing that they can be right in the corner there watching you from their back, in your backyard, right. or you in her backyard, it's okay. Right. And if you can paint that picture, right. then people will go, it's okay. And I think that's, that's, that's the point of this. And, she proved it to me over and over again that it's very complex and she's been there and she's in the backyard of many people right here in this valley. And, and we have cats no just like it. And, and we have no, no idea. idea. Um, the program, uh, Mountain Lion and Me, uh, next Wednesday on the uh, Smithsonian Channel, they were nice enough to provide us some video. You had the benefit of some technology as well as we take a look at this next clip here, using some high tech stuff to be able to follow these mountain lions. They're not easy to track even on a good day. And yet you were able to use some just incredible technology, the infrared work and the camera work that we were done. Talk to me about how that kind of unfolded for you too, Casey. I mean, this film only would exist from marrying two things, very primitive tracking mm -hmm. and the highest tech that exists out there. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, high-end military-grade thermal cameras, seized body heat. You know, it's the same thing that everybody's looking for, for bad guys out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you could use that technology to find a, an elusive, invisible cat. If it gives off body heat and she's trying to hide up on the hillside, bang, can find her. So now we find her. Right. Now we've got a, tr a truck mounted camera mm -hmm. uh, and gyro stabilized, a thousand millimeter lens on it. And I can drive up and down the road, look for body heat, find it, zoom on out there. If she moves, I can move with the truck, completely stable. I mean, these are things that they're using in the biggest feature films on the planet. Right. This is the things that the special forces are using over in Afghanistan. And we're using it to tell the story of a beautiful mountain lion family. And nobody had more fun with it than Casey Anderson sitting on a hillside in the Paradise Valley. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt about that. In fact, right now, I'm like, why am I not out there talking about this? Right. But it is. It is an addiction almost. Because you, you are getting the opportunity to see something you're not supposed to. I mean, was it literally every day, what's she going to do next? What are they going to do next? Where are they going to go next? Well, you try to speculate. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a surprise after a surprise. But the, you know, the one thing I wasn't going to do was not go see. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to get up every day. It was like an unwrapping a Christmas present every time. Right. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't 
I'm going to miss it. Mama Moen and, and her kittens, uh, Eeny, Meeny, and Miney, had uh, some challenges. Uh, you had an incident uh, at one point while you were filming this with hearing the hounds, that unmistakable sound of anybody that's ever hunted a mountain lion. That's the tool of choice, our, our hounds. You had that opportunity with uh, Mama Mo and her kittens as well. Yeah, I mean, mountain lion hunting in the area is, is legal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because her choice to live where she did amongst our neighborhood mm -hmm. was by design. You know, she knew that no right. one no one was going to hunt her in that zone specifically. Mm -hmm. Other competition probably wouldn't come into that area to be afraid of the people's presence. Right. But if she crossed the road, she could go into the zone where she would be legally hunted. Mm -hmm. It's not legal to hunt female mountain lions with kittens, but there was times where she would go off and not take the kittens. And it scared me every time she went over there. Mm -hmm. You know, I respect what those people do. For sure. But of course, this is Mama Mo. This, mm -hmm. this, this animal means so much more to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, for her to go over the, across the road and just turn into a mountain lion again and be, be killed mm -hmm. legally would have, it would have ended the story. Mm -hmm. So you wake up with that anxiety as you would a family member going to someplace dangerous. Right. Um, not only the danger of human contact, uh, but uh, another mountain lion decided to venture into your realm as well. What an opportunity you had there to see how, how that unfolded. I mean, it's, it's super complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's other mountain lions, there's other animals that she's going to have to interact with mm -hmm. and do the right thing. You know, so being a mountain lion out here, even in the, some of the best habitat on the planet, there's always challenges. Okay. And a big male showed up, and I'm like, is it a good guy? Is this, is this dad of the kittens? Is this a bad guy? Could this be the end? Mm -hmm. I mean, because male mountain lions do kill kittens once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I, no matter what, I was going to follow a story and tell the way it was going to be and I was going to find out the, what the answer was. Any surprises, Casey, as you're going through this? I mean, you, 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 obviously a lot of surprises. You didn't, we don't know a lot about mountain lions and all those kind of things, but was there something in this while you were spending these months with Mama Mo and her kittens that just, holy cow, I had no idea. Are any of those moments through this? I mean, almost every day. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there's one that really sticks out to me that really kind of paints the picture. Mm -hmm. um, imagine this. You know, there's a 747 takes off from LAX and is going to London. Mm -hmm. And it's 300 people. And it's going over and And a mountain lion takes the opportunity to take those next steps, to allow that sound of that jet 35,000 feet over to mask the sound of her footfall to close the gap on a deer. And no you see, oh yeah, and this, is, this is something I got to watch. And it, it's, it, it's like, if this little thing's happening, what other little things like this are happening? And there's, you know, 300 people up there that are influencing, unknowingly, a mountain lion's family's next meal. And this is what the wild world looks like now. I mean, they are. There's fences and roads and jet planes and, every, you know, we're part of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's part of it is that we need to understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to adapt to us. Uh, and it's our turn to adapt. It's our turn to be the good neighbor. Do we sell them short then? I mean, obviously the ability to use a, a, a jumbo jetliner as camouflage or at least audio camouflage at some point like that. Do we sell them short? We don't give them enough credit, do we? No way. Yeah. No, I think, I think that we just assume. Yeah. They're just a predator, um, but they're not. They're an animal and they have emotion and they make choices and they learn and they try to live with us. Mm -hmm. And the mountain lion's only, only successful because it's a ninja and it can live with us. Right. And yeah, that's why it's here. It's why it's successful. And uh, the only thing that will ever take that away is our choices. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more that we understand them and realize it's okay to have them as neighbors, you know, that's what it's going to take for, for them to be around. Did this change you, Casey? I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. You've made a living following different creatures around and, and doing all of that. Did this time with Mama Mo and her kittens change you? Because you... I, there, there's no doubt how personal this uh, this tour was. You didn't spend all that much time with her, but it, it was a it was a huge bond. I, I gather that from not only the documentary, but continuing to talk about it today. You know, the, the revealing of the intricacies and the depth of the, that individual and that mm -hmm. family um, it surprised me and, and uh, opened up my mind. Mm -hmm. and, and these little stories, these individual stories, are unfolding all the time out there. So, as a filmmaker, I think it's important to seek those and to tell those because that's the truth. Um, and that's all we want to tell. And I think if people know the truth, they'll make the right choices. Again, program coming uh, Wednesday on the Smithsonian Channel, Mountain Lion and Me. Uh, before people go to watch this, uh, what advice do you want them? How do you want people to view this uh, documentary? How do you want people to view this uh, clip and this brief glimpse into the uh, mountain lion world? Uh, I would 
think you have a message there as well. You know, I think it's simply this. You know, I have no message. Mm -hmm. I think the story tells itself. And I think that if, you know, if I was preaching something or trying to make a point, that would take away from this. Mm -hmm. Because the essence and the beauty of the story speaks volumes. And so I think people, when they tune in, they just watch it with an open heart and open mind, draw their own conclusions, and I know it's going to be the right one. Mm. As you're going through this, you know there's going to have to be an ending. You're, the mountain lions don't spend a lot of time in one place, and you had an, an incredible opportunity with the, the Ghost Ranch restaurant that she had set up in the back of your lot and those kind of things. Um, some sadness as this thing unfolded because, you know, the, the likelihood of you and Mama Mold crossing paths again, pretty slim. Yeah, it was a, uh, you know, at some level, the essence of a mountain lion is to be hidden in secret. And in order for that to be true, it would be, I'd have to let go of this selfish desire and obsession to continue to watch it. Mm -hmm. But to say, okay, I'm gonna let you be invisible again, to let you do what you do so well, mm -hmm. and to step away and stop looking and not get up in the morning and go out there, was really, really hard for me. But it was the right thing, and uh, I fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. And in, you know, what they say, set them free, yeah, and I did. There you go. I, you will fall in love with her as well watching this uh, on Wednesday. Trust me that. I had the opportunity to, to watch this. Uh, do you look at the area differently now? I mean, because before that was your backyard. That was your little bridge that, you know, you drove in every day after you went out and did whatever it is you're doing, you know, whatever animal it was you were following for that period of time. You look at it differently now because Mama Mo giving you a different perspective of your backyard. I look at that mountain differently. I, you know, I don't know what Mama Mo is doing, but I look at the world differently. Mm. I mean, every mountain, every spot, there's a story. And now I know that because of her. Mm. And I wonder what's going on out there. And uh, you know, the next project is gonna go find one of those spots and go find out. Mm. More work to follow. You've got other uh, uh, work coming up as well. Let's talk a little bit about some of that that's going on as well. And Casey's job is never done. Mama Mo was yeah. a, nice, uh, uh, a nice part of it, but you have other uh, projects in the uh, works as well. Oh, lots of them. You know, in fact, similar species. We're, mm -hmm. we're gonna be going down to Patagonia. Um, some Chilean friends of ours invited me down there. Beautiful ecosystem. Pumas running around down there, same species of mountain lion we have here. Mm -hmm. Tons of ap opportunity to tell stories about individual personalities, uh, get up close, really see on what these animals are doing, um, learn more about them. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a place that we can do that and tell, tell more stories. Uh, I mean, that's just one. I mean, I'm going to be all over the world in the next six months just mm -hmm. looking for very similar things. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is never ending. The wild world's a big place. and. Uh, be headed out there. <laughs> you, you talk about telling their stories. You really don't, though. I mean, that's not what you do. You let them tell the story. You're just kind of the vehicle for us to hear it. I, I mean, is, is, is that a pretty good uh, analysis of that's, what you do? That's spot on, Chet. That's it. You know, it is. I think that's the art. You know, it is just letting it unfold, doing it justice visually, um, not really trying to dictate the story at all. There's mm -hmm. no script. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Let it, let it be what it is. Well, let's take another uh, look at this uh, mountain lion and me. We've got another clip uh, to show you. Let's uh, take a look and uh, a little bit of a listen here of uh, uh, the mountain lion and me coming up on Smithsonian Channel on Wednesday. Go ahead and roll that. This place is harsh. The winds can blow 60 miles an hour and temperatures can drop down to 50 below zero. Blizzards are unpredictable and in a matter of minutes, you can be lost in a complete whiteout. Not the best conditions to have three kittens. Most of the animals in this part of the country have evolved to sync the birth of their young with warmer weather and spring conditions. While the winter setting might seem like a death sentence for these little kittens, it's really the opposite. The frigid cold actually drives the prey from the high country down into the valley below. It's like having a buffet right at her front door. It was obvious she had several denning areas and caves that she would go to, but then it was really apparent that there was this one cave, this one cave I call the kitty condo. That's kind of her main cave. That's really her home base. I've gone years and traveled thousands of miles looking for mountain lions, and I've barely ever seen one. Finding that cave was huge. I mean, it gave me such an incredible opportunity to set up cameras and film them up close without being intrusive. 
When I set up on the kills, I really never know what I'm going to get. I just hope everything's going to work. And that's the boy there. Look at him. It's given me a glimpse into the life of a mountain lion family, which is rarely ever filmed. And I'm developing an understanding of an animal that is much more than a predator. There's also this soft side to them where they're, they're just a mother taking care of their babies. This is the little moments that I love. Sitting here at their dinner table allows me to see each of their personalities really come through. Like a good mother, Mama Mo keeps the family clean and fed, and even looks after herself a little bit. Eenie is a miniature version of Mama Mo, independent, adventurous, full of courage. And Miney sticks closer to Mom, possessive of Mama Mo's attention. He's the biggest and only male of the kittens, but a complete mama's boy. And Meanie's name continues to fit perfectly. For a mother to provide food, it's very important. But here's the other thing that this mother provides. Snuggling, loving, cleaning. You just don't, when you think about a mountain lion, you don't think about this side of their life, and this is what they're doing most of the time. <laughs> so he's. An excerpt of uh, Mountain Lion and Me uh, coming up at uh, 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time on Wednesday on the Smithsonian Channel. Casey Anderson, the uh, filmmaker, uh, joining us this morning on Face of State. Casey, there's a period of time in this uh, documentary. You did something that I got a. a I can't believe you did. You climbed inside that den to put a camera inside the uh, cave there. What was going through your mind or maybe not going through your mind to make you crawl into that <laughs> den at that point? Maybe you get a little blind in the obsession. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just got to, that was their home. That was uh, their bedroom to get the camera in there and, and, and to witness these moments, these, mm -hmm. these snuggling and the purring just like a house cat, mm -hmm. to, to see that intimate side of this family rather than going for the kill, right. you know, the kill shot. Right. Uh, those are more important. Mm -hmm. there, uh, there's a period of time, though, you're setting a camera while that male was visiting one of the dens, and you're just right there at the rocks. You can hear the mountain lion inside. What was going through your mind then? I should probably ask your crew what was going through their mind watching you do this. You know, they know me. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing. And again, this is my job, mm -hmm. you know, to be the voice, to tell the story. And it's not easy out there, and it can be dangerous sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got to take some chances, you know. But, you know, they're, they're calculated. I'm not going to do anything that's going to, you know, hurt the mountain lion. You know, if I make a mistake and I get hurt, they're going to pay the price. But to tell a good story, you got to try and you got to do it and you got to take some risks sometime. And I did. And it worked out for you this time. Here I am. There it worked you go. out. Yeah, no, it worked out good. We got some good stuff. That's perfect. Again, Casey Anderson joining us this morning on Face the State. His uh, new project, uh, The Mountain Lion and Me, coming up Wednesday on the Smithsonian Channel, 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. An opportunity to experience mountain lions unlike uh, another opportunity. You, you just didn't get this. Again, walking across your bridge. We showed your bridge. And Mama Mo and her uh, clan walking right into your life. Right into my life. And now they'll be walking right into the, the living rooms that everybody's going to watch. That's phenomenal. Casey Anderson, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank and thank you for joining us for Face the State. You've been watching Face the State, a presentation of MTN, the Montana Television Network.